Well, this is very exciting. We are going to visit our accountant, Ty Platt, to see if we can afford a delivery guy. You shouldn't just throw the word exciting around. It cheapens the word. It's like the word love. How much can we afford to pay a delivery guy? Well, if these numbers you gave me are correct. They are correct, sir. Then you can't afford to pay him anything. A lame attempt at humor, swing and a miss. Your prices are too low. Lowest in town. Why do you think Staples and Dunder Mifflin can't match your prices? Corporate greed. Look, our pricing model is fine. I reviewed the numbers myself. Over time, with enough volume, we become profitable. Yeah, with a fixed cost pricing model, that's correct. But, yeah. But you need to use a variable cost pricing model. Why don't you explain what that is to the, so they can understand? Yeah, Just explain you, what that is. Explain what you think that is. Okay. Just explain that. As you sell more paper and your company grows, so will your costs. For example, delivery man, health care, well, business well, expansion. Whatever. Yeah. So uh, at these prices, the more paper you sell, the less money you'll make. Our prices are the only thing keeping us in business. They're actually putting you out of business. Ty, I would like you to crunch those numbers again. It's a program. There's no such thing. Just as... crunch them. Just crunch them, please. Crunch. Did it help? What is wrong with me? Am I just the biggest idiot in the world? Everything I touch turns to failure. How could I possibly believe in this? Oh, damn it! Oh. oh! The problem is the same one that we've had from the beginning. Thank you, Dwight. Yeah, um, uh, Dwight. Dwight. Yep. The Michael Scott Paper Company is a big problem, and we need a solution. Now, would corporate approve a temporary price reduction for returning customers? God, no. Stupid. Yeah, it makes us look weak. I agree. I just... I say we fill Michael's office with bees. My APRS owes me a favor. Now, this is a projection of no, over, over yeah, three months. We still have the inventory sitting Well, that's a sign. No, okay. Let me float exactly. something out there, okay? The revenue, can I just say, can I say something? too expensive? Yeah. There is a hive of bees outside the front door. We kidnap the queen, extract her alarm pheromones, place them on a flushable wipe, and put that in his bathroom. The cheapest option is to make Michael an offer. Yes. Yes, I was going to say the same thing. We should buy him out. Oh, he didn't. Oh, man. If only Michael had children. That's how you really apply the pressure. What is wrong with you? Hey. Can I talk to you guys for a second? We're not hiring, Jim. Actually, here for something else. Listen, I can't make you laugh right now. You know I love a good guessing game, but why don't I just tell you what I'm here for? Turns out, you guys have made a pretty big dent in the Dunder Mifflin sales. Oh, that's nice. So David Wallace has asked me to come down here and see if you would be interested in Dunder Mifflin buying you out. Seriously? Are you being serious? Be bluffing, Pam. Jim, what you don't understand is that this company's worse. Oh! We, no. We don't have any... Oh! See, I'm here to learn as little information as possible. All I really need to hear is if your incredibly successful company would be receptive to a buyout. Uh, nope. Just to reiterate, none of us is going to say anything that might indicate we are going broke. Right, right. There is no way in hell that I am going to say that we're broke. Oh, I'm really worried I'm going to say it. Well, well, well. How the turntables... We are prepared to make you a very generous offer. And we are prepared to reject that offer. Michael, you haven't even heard we'll never accept their first offer. $12,000. Are you kidding me? That is insultingly low. I don't even want to hear what your first offer was. What do you hear? Your company is four weeks old. I know this business. I know what suppliers are charging. I know you can't be making very much money. I don't know how your prices are so low, but... I know it can't keep up that way. I'm sure you're scared, probably in debt. That's the best offer you're gonna get. I'll see your situation and I'll raise you a situation. Your company is losing clients left and right. You have a stockholder meeting coming up and you're going to have to explain to them why your most profitable branch is bleeding. So they may be looking for a little change in the CFO. So I don't think I need to wait out Dunder Mifflin. I think I just have to wait out you. I want my old job back. I want my old parking space back. 
I want a Sebring. They don't make him anymore. And I want Charles gone. I'm not firing Charles. He's very valuable. That's very kind of you to say, David. I need him gone. No. Okay, then I want Pam back. Uh, you already have a new receptionist. I sales. Need. Thank you. Pam's not a salesperson. Yes, she is. At the Michael Scott Paper Company, in its heyday. That's right. Okay. Please continue. And Ryan. Ryan cost Dunder Mifflin hundreds of thousands of dollars, Michael. You know Ryan, what? David, I don't care if Ryan murdered his entire family. He is like a son to me. Your company cannot be worth that much. Our company is worth nothing. That's the difference between you and I. Business isn't about money to me, David. If tomorrow my company goes under, I will just start another paper company, and then another, and another, and another. I have no shortage of company names. Michael. That's the... one of them. Yes. These are our demands. This is what we want. Our balls are in your court. He started his own company and now he's back. Who could it be? I'll give you a hint. He is a man. A man you have missed with all your heart. A man who has ruined all other men for you. Who is it? What I want to do right now is try something a little different. I'm going to throw it out there, starting with this meeting. I want you guys to run it. I want you to say whatever you want. Take it away. Your meeting. What are you doing? If there is something that you would like to say as a group, then by all means, you may say it. Can you give us a hint? When I needed salespeople for my new paper company, everyone here turned their back on me. Am I going to ask them to beg for forgiveness? No. Am I going to ask for a big crying apology? No. Am I going to ask them to slit their wrists for me? No. I just want a tiny microscopic version of that. Previously on 24, Michael Scott leaves his loyal friends of Dunder Mifflin to start his own paper company. However, his sales team doesn't believe in him. And against all odds, he goes off, is a success, and is bought out by Dunder Mifflin to only be reteamed with the people who didn't believe in him. Next week on 24, what will... What you, stop it, stop it. Sorry, do I still have a job here? Not important. Oh, okay, all right, yes, yes, deserves to know you have a job, frankly, you have a job, because Ryan and Pam are starting with us as salesmen. Wait, what? How is that going to work? It's going to work very smoothly, because Pam and Ryan are bringing over a ton of clients from Michael Scott Paper Company. And you mean the clients like, you stole from us? Yeah, aren't we getting those clients back? No, you lost those clients. I call foul, sir. Okay. You were bought out. They, so the company then bought out all of the stolen clients. Okay. Dwight, let me explain something to you. I set the rules and you follow them blindly, okay? And if you have a problem with that, then you can talk to our complaint department. It's a trash can. Thank you all for coming. Now, please, everyone, take a candle. We don't have time for candles. I think we're all in the bathroom. Skip the candles. Let's cut to the chase. How annoying is this, huh? Do you mean what's going on today or this meeting? No, obviously what's happening at the meeting is not annoying. Only certain people in it are annoying. Can I take one of these candles home? We're in crisis mode here. Do you understand that two unqualified so-called salespeople are being favored because they all failed together? And frankly, I'm not convinced that Michael and Pam didn't have a thing going while they were gone. Can I address that? No, you're too close. Okay. Stanley, how do you feel about those two taking your clients? It's not right. I don't like it. He doesn't like it. You don't take my clients away and give them to a secretary. <sighs> no offense, Jim. I think she's very pretty. Her face is okay, but... Jeez, what... What are you doing here? I don't know. I saw a crowd. Thought there might be a dog fire. Get out! <laughs> that was great. I know. Why are you, you look so, so classy. Mad? I do. Sure. Well, <laughs> I, where is that bowl? I, you have you a second. Michael's got paper company only. Yeah, I think you're going to want to cool it with that because it's starting to upset the other salesman. Okay. Well, Tough. I will. No, no. I'll talk to them when they all get back from the bathroom. This is awkward to talk about, but there may or may not be, but definitely is a mutiny forming in the warehouse right now. 
We want our clients back or we quit, Michael. Who quits? Me. And me. Me too. You guys gotta be kidding. No, oh, we gotta be deadly serious. We'll start our own paper company. The Schrute, Bernard, Lapp and Vance, Stanley Paper Company. I love it. I love this idea and I fully support you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you some seed money. There you go. There's some seed money for you. And there's some seed money for you. And there's some seed money for you. And you can take it, no hard feelings. But if you stay, I want an apology and I want a big one. You want us to apologize yes, to I you? Yes, I do. That's completely backwards. It's frontwards. Michael, you thought you were attacking corporate, but we were the ones who got hurt. You should be apologizing to us. That's right. right. Michael, you always said we were a family. Then you went after us. No matter how I look at this, I am in the wrong. And I have looked at this thing like a hundred different ways. From my point of view, from their point of view, 98 others, and no, bottom line, I'm in the wrong. I'm the bad guy.